on in, have a seat. And, um, uh, I have a lot to cover in one hour. I'm going to make you all tarot readers, so there's not, uh, <laughs> I know, it's a bold claim. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so just bear with me, I'm going to talk quickly, and we're going to have a lot of fun. And it's too fun. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael J. Uh, I'm an offbeat artist, and you can see my wonderland in room 222 here at Artomatic in the wonderful Washington, D.C. Uh, but today I'm going to uh, explain how you can read tarot using your intuition and just 10 key words. Uh, so, uh, divination. What is divination? Divination is your connecting with the divine. So it is uh, your uh, consciousness communicating with the superconscious, uh, and and this is is how uh, uh, we get uh, wisdom from the universe. So uh, how can you uh, divine? Uh, we can read uh, tea leaves. We can look up at the birds in the sky and, and discern their uh, flight patterns. We can cast runes, gaze in the crystal ball. My favorite way, though, is cardomancy, which is reading cards. And the best cards to read with is the tarot. Now, the tarot is divided in two main sections. We've got the major arcana and we've got the minor arcana. Major arcana is the major secrets. These are the things that we don't have control over. It's the fate cards. Minor arcana is the things that we do have control over. This is the things that if we know the elemental energies, that uh, then we can we can control those things. There's small potatoes. It's called the pip cards. Triumphs, big things. So we call those the triumph cards. They triumph over everything. Okay. So two main sections. Now in the minor arcana, we split that into four sections. And where there's four suits, and just like in regular playing cards, how you have spades and hearts and clubs and diamonds, uh, in the tarot we we have swords and cups and wands and discs or coins or pentacles they're called different things but each one of these uh correspond to the elemental energies so we've got air uh, water fire and earth now starting at the top we got the brain uh thoughts are in the air right and when we speak we create air that that is is communicating thought right so this is the thoughts are sharp and to the point right uh they they cut right to the to the to the point just like a sword cuts right to the point and, and cuts through the air. So the air element, swords, thought. So when you see the word swords, think thought. Uh, now, next, moving down on the body, we got the, the heart, and this is the emotions. We feel very deeply. Uh, we cry when we're happy or we're sad. So, and water from the eyes, also water fills a cup. So we connect the, the, the cups with emotions. So when you see cups, think emotion. Now, going down on the body, we get a little lower to the gut or maybe even the genitalia. This is the, our, our sex drive, our drive to act, to do something. So the, the wands connect to action. Yeah. And then the lowest of the low, well, the earth element, our feet are on the ground, right? The lowest of the body, our feet touch the, the earth. And this connects to that slow, uh, the lowest <coughs> of the elemental energies is that earth energy. This is the mundane stuff, the, the really day-to-day, -day, the, the, your, your health, your, your wealth. And that's why we have a coin there connecting to money. Uh, but it's, it's the, the, the very low stuff. Okay, so that's the four basic ideas of the minor arcana, the four elemental energies. And so when you're, you're reading tarot cards, uh, when, uh, for a beginner, uh, they, you could say, well, what's, what does the Seven of Swords mean? I don't know what, what what's the Seven of Swords mean, right? But if you use these, these, four, uh, these ten uh, keywords, then, well, I do know what a struggle is, and uh, swords are thought. So what's a struggle of thought? I bet you could tell me what, what that is, and if you can, then you're reading the Seven of, of Swords. So already, you know, using these, these, these keywords, you can start to read the tarot, even if you don't really know anything about the tarot. Now, um, so we've got these 10 keywords. One is unity, two is duality, three is creativity, a four is stability, five is disruption, six, uh, you got the harmony, seven is a struggle, eight, we've got the balance or rebalancing, nine is power, and then the 10 is a transition back to unity. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit slower 
but, but that's the, the 10 that you need to remember. Um, now, uh, when you're reading cards, you, there's lots of different spreads and stuff that you can distribute, right? Uh, there's, lot, there's complicated spreads, there's easy spreads. One of the easy sp spreads that I like to use is just a simple three card spread, past, present, future, right? And the past is what do you, uh, you know, what, what is leading up to this situation? What, what is the current situation? And then the, uh, the, the present is your current obstacle that you're dealing with. And then the future could be, um, well, what is the advice that I need to know moving forward on my current path, right? So this is just simple ideas, but while you're shuffling, you, you keep in mind your question and you uh, interpret as it goes down on the spread. Now, when you interpret, you use your intuition. This is this allows the, the, the super conscious to communicate with the conscious, right? And it, random ideas will pop into your head. Voice those ideas, even if they seem really strange because you're giving voice to this higher wisdom. And then once you've spoken them, then determine if it resonates or not. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But by getting it out there, it gives it a chance to let this, your, your higher self communicate with you. Um, so, uh, so intuition plays a, a big, uh, play in, in all this. When you are, uh, you're, you're reading the cards, uh, look and see, are there patterns? Are there colors? There's, is there something that, that links these cards together? Are the characters in the cards looking at each other, not looking at each other? These are the things that, uh, you can start to tell the story and read between the cards. And then it's all about storytelling, right? So we, we look at the cards, we see what, what they're trying to say. Now, in addition to your intuition, there's the key words, and that's the knowledge. And you can spend a lifetime learning all the intricacy of all the things that are impacted into these cards, esoteric and exoteric. Exoteric with an X, that's the, um, the, the common symbols that we, we know when we look at, at uh, 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 some things, they, we all know what they mean. Esoteric is more secret with the S, and that's the, the secret things that are on the down low encoded into the, uh, the images that, and I'm gonna let you in on, a, on some of those secrets. So, uh, so but, but these are the things that, that's on the, the under uh, uh, layer. But together, the more you learn about these things, it just enriches your, your reading. But, uh, but just with the basic keywords and your, you know, your, your creativity, you'll be able to do just fine. It's all about the balance though, between those two things. Okay, so we got the majors, we got the minors, we got the keywords, ready to go. <laughs> so let's, let's dive right into the most popular uh, tarot deck out there, uh, at least in the US, is the Rider Waite Smith. So we start with the ace, this is unity, and uh, the, the sword is thought, so unity of thought. So we've got uh, a, a unity of thought, a new challenge, a problem, overcoming you can overcome this by focusing your thought, unity of thought, nice and easy. Uh, emotions, when we have a unity of motion, when we share emotions, we're all on the same, we all feel the same thing. So it's, it's usually the beginnings of love or, or something like that. Some strong bond that, that connects us all and the water flows and it's beautiful. So uh, um, uh, unity of emotion, unity of action. When, when uh, this is the, the, the match that, that lights the, the bonfire, we're already imagining the bonfire uh, fully raging, but the, the match gets it going. So these aces, they're, they're both the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Uh, you have to uh, first in, um, first you have to imagine something already completed before you even start it. And it's that connection between the beginning and the end that, that is the power of the ace. The ace is neither low nor high, it's, it's both. And in uh, the Pythagorean thought, they didn't even consider one to be a real number. They, they considered numbers plural. So ace was kind of this, this unity, this idea of the perfection of the idea. Um, so so the, uh, that's, the, the, that's why they don't even call it a one in the minor arcana, they call it an ace. Uh, so we got the, the unity of action. We're all together now. We're, we're all ready to, to act together. And then this is the unity of structure. So uh, again, it's the, both the beginning and the end. Here we are, if we're hobbits at the Shire, and we're, we're peeking through, and the mountain back there is Mount Dune. We already see where we need to go uh, to, to throw the ring in, but it's the beginning and the end and, and, and the structure uh, of, of, of life uh, that this card is, is hinting at. Now, in the major arcana, 
on the other side, the, the major secrets, we have the great uniter. He is the, the magician, and he is uniting as above, so below with his, with his hand signal here. And he's, he's uniting, he's bringing down the powers of heaven and manifesting them here on earth. So this is, is uniting uh, big cosmic forces here. He's also got all four elements, all four from the minor arcana are on his tables. He's uniting them all. So unity is the theme here. Even the flowers, uh, roses representing life and, and lilies representing death. He's, he's uniting them all because it's, everything is connected. Uh, we've got this lambiscate over his head. Now, in the earlier versions of, of the tarot, this was hidden in his hat. But here it's very blatant for all to see. It, this is the infinity being connected with a nice little bow. So yeah, uniting everything, right? Now, in the, um, there's, uh, referring back to the older versions of the Marseille deck and, and the tarot that came centuries before, uh, there's different traditions. And now the Rider Waite Smith, they swapped two cards. So when uh, they swapped the, the strength card, which is eight, and, and, and um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the uh, strength card is usually 11, and they swapped it with justice, which is eight. Uh, why they did this uh, is, is complicated and would be a whole other lecture to explain. But the idea is that, that Waite switched this. So the 11th card, or what should be the 11th card, he marks the 8. So disregard the Nomen Rumo here because I'll tell you how these two cards connect. It's that theme of unity. And if you look, there's lots of things that, that give it away, right? They're both yellow sky. They've both got the lamiscate above their head saying, guess what? These two cards do go together. She is the, the unity of our higher self and our lower self. So this is our lower nature, the beast. She's the higher nature, our higher self. They're being connected by a bond of love. The lion loves her. That's why he lets her dominate him. Otherwise, he could have tear her to shreds. He's a wild beast, but he doesn't because he loves her. They share that. They're united. It's a theme of unity, okay? So that's why uh, uh, I see in the cycles of 10, as I see the tarot, this, this should be the 11, the second cycle of one, Rider Waite makes it the, uh, the eight because uh, um, he goes with the Golden Dawn tradition. But we're just going to pretend that room, number rule is an 11 and, uh, and move forward. Now, this third cycle of one, we got the, the world card. This is the Anima Mundi. And look what is tying the wreath together. A lamiscate. So you've got that lamiscate symbol once again popping its head through. And what is uniting here? All four elements in the corner. And... Uh, the wands, positive and negative, she's uniting them. And this scarf, what does it hide? It's actually, she's not a she, she's a she, he. This is a hermaphrodite, and the scarf is covering the male anatomy. Now, that's that's a, one of those esoteric secrets. Um, but, uh, but the idea is the hermetic ideal that we all strive for is this beyond sexes, or both sexes. The hermetic ideal is both united, right? So this is the world soul. She she represents that that higher state. Uh, she's the archetype that represents that thing that unites us all. And the soul of the world, that's what connects us. When you think of, of a soulmate, you want to be united with them. When you think of soul food or, 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 or soul music, you, you, wanna, it, you want that uh, un uniting uh, a sense of home, a sense of connection. And, and that's what, what brings us all together. This is the, the last card in the major. So it's, it's that pure unity uh, happening. Now, going into... Duality with the two. We're going to go back into the minor arcana now. And duality of thought, because we've got the two swords. So it's, it's two different thoughts. And how do we know which thought is right? Uh, that we know because when we go into that peaceful Zen state, see she's blindfolded and she's, she's meditating, that's how we can discern which duality, which thought is, is the right way to go. So duality of thought with, with this card. Okay, now we have a duality of emotion. I like to call this the lover's card. Now, there is a lover's card in the Major Arcana, but I'll tell you why I don't think of it that way uh, when we get to it. But, but this, it's a duality of emotion. Two different people, but they share the same emotion, and they're being brought together. Now, every card, when you're reading, can be reversed. So if it pops up upside down, this could mean a breakup. This could mean a, a, a pulling apart of some strong commitment. But when it's, it's upright, it's a coming, the duality is, is a coming together, and often it's love. So this is my lover's card. Um, now we've got duality of action. So this, I, I like to call this the, the um, 
should I stay or should I go card? You know, if I go, there will be trouble. If I stay, it will be double. But he's actively, he's actively de deciding what, um, what should I do? Should I go out there and conquer the world? Should I stay home? At home, it's nice and cozy. So he's trying to decide, you know, which action should I take? So dualities of action with that one. All right, duality of structure, because again, we're structure and uh, the dualities happening. So uh, structure of the world. It's a topsy-turvy world out there. Look at the ships at sea being tossed around. And as we all know, but how do we maintain the structure? We gotta be light on our feet, right? We gotta juggle. So we're juggling those dualities uh, to maintain structure. So duality of structure. All right, back into the majors. We've got the high priestess. And what dualities does she show? So she's got the, the black and white pillars and uh, the, the severity and mercy is what they represent. Uh, and, and there's division. So when we think of unity, everything in a spiritual, spiritual sense, everything is connected, right? Um, everything is one on a spiritual level. When we come down to the, the material level, then suddenly a veil is lowered. And you see this temple veil that she sits in front of? That is, is uh, dividing or, or the, you know, separating the seen from the unseen. So she is, is this uh, uh, archetype that, that separates, uh, but with separation comes power. Uh, when, when you have these two columns separated, they can hold up the ceiling of the, of the temple. When you bring them together, the ceiling comes crashing down. So we need these dualities, but really, really the truth is behind, if you look behind her, her veil, there's just one ocean. So the, the reality is that, that all is one, but because of this material world that we live in, we see things in dualities. And when you think about it, dual, all dualities are, are kind of half-truths, right? Uh, uh, hot and cold, really, it's just one thing. Temperature, black, white, no, it's just really tone, right? So we're looking at the world through dualities, but really behind the curtain, all is one. But she's, you know, that she's the gatekeeper. So only if you're worthy do you get to read in her scroll. Only if you're worthy does she let you peek and see that all is one. You know, this is gonna blow our minds. So uh, the dualities are there. Now, when we get to the 12th card, the second cycle of two, we've got the hanged man. And what dualities does he represent? Uh, well, they hung people like this when they thought they were a traitor, right? But one person's traitor is another person's hero. So with the halo here, uh, it all depends on your point of view. So is this guy the traitor? Is he the hero? It helps to take a step back and, and look at things from a different perspective, walk in another person's shoes, and it's hard, right? The, we're taught to think the other, that's the bad one, right? But, but really, we're all united. It's just, uh, it, it's just coming to that, that wisdom, that epiphany. Uh, Odin uh, hung himself on the tree, and he learned the wisdom of the runes. So, so too, can we learn wisdom by, by seeing things in a different perspective? Okay. Now, we get to three, and three is a magic number. So one, we got a point, right? Two, we got two points, now we can make a line. With three, now you can make shapes and, and have sacred geometry and lots of, of, of magical, cool things happen. So, uh, so three is creativity, and, and swords are thought, so creativity of thought. When we see this, and we see the big heart, and hearts are, are connected to the emotions, right? Cups, what's that doing in, in this? This is supposed to be thoughts with a sword. Well. Uh, this is all about heartbreak with the with the rain and everything, but the real lesson between behind this card is the creativity of thought. That's how we get past heartbreak is by reinventing ourselves. How do we? I, I live without this person that dumped me, right? I, I need to reinvent myself in a creative way so that I can move forward and get past heartbreak. So it's the creativity of thought, uh, using the key words that that this is the, the the real message trying to to come through. Now here's the emotion. Here's cups. Here's the creativity of emotion, and we can creatively celebrate abundance in a creative way. You know, two is, is kind of vanilla, but three, three is a party, right? Uh, I think there's a, a French word for that, menage a trois, or, you know, but anyway, it gets creative and, and fun. So uh, this is a creative celebration of that idea. All right, going into action, we got the creativity of action, right? This is uh, a collaborative, collaborative effort is on the way. He's got these ships at sea, and they're going out to trade or plunder. Uh, but, but somebody has to stay home and watch the fort. So it's active delegation of duty. Everybody has their job. And, uh, and, and it's that cl collaboration, a creative collaboration, where, uh, where everybody uh, works for the betterment of the whole. So that's creative action. Uh, 
this is structure with the coins. So we got a creativity of structure. What's the structure? A, uh, a cathedral is being built. Or, and it's another collaborative uh, uh, joint effort between the guy with the plans, the guy with the money, uh, and the stonemason. Now the focus is on the stonemason. He's up on top on the pedestal or, or bench here. All the focus is on him. Why? Because this is a creativity of thought. Yeah, we need the money. Yeah, we need the plan. But, but the, the stonemason is the guy that gets it done. So creativity of, of the structure. Uh, now, moving in back to the major arcana, we've got the creativity of the empress. And she rules with love, which is a really creative and cool way to, to rule. I would, uh, you know, you want to please her. So you're not, you're, it's not like you're ruled by the sword. You're, you want, uh, and she's got the, the heart here and the Venus symbol of love. You, you, you love her and that's why you want to, uh, to be her loyal subject. Um, th there's fertility symbols galore because she's creating feminine creative energy. She might be pregnant. She's got these loose gowns on, very sexy, pomegranates, uh, rushing water, uh, ripening crops, fertility symbols galore. But she's, she's a creative, active uh, empress, and we love her. Okay, now, 13, that's the second cycle of three. Uh, we got the death card. So for life, there's death. But it's not as bad as it looks. Usually this doesn't actually represent physical death. This is more of creative change, right? So, uh, so that's the, the the positive way to sometimes it can mean death but but really it's it's just dying one thing has to die for another thing to to live so this is is all about that that creative change okay moving into the four for stability right and th swords are thought so what do we got we got stable thought and how do we find stable thought we find that through getting a good night's sleep right so we we take uh uh take take give me give me in the i'll Think on this and then, you know, I'll get a good night's sleep. I'll let you know in the morning. In the morning, my thoughts will be more clear. I've, I've cleared out the cobwebs of the mind, right? So this is, that's uh, the, the idea being expressed here is creativity. Uh, and I'm sorry, stability, stability of thought. Uh, because we're, we're more stable thought when, we, when we've got a good night's sleep. Okay, stability, stability with the four. And here's the stability of emotion. Now, the trouble with the four is that sometimes uh, the, the soda goes flat, right? It's, uh, and we gotta keep the, the, the drinks coming. So it's stability is so good that we wanna stay there and we can't, because this is four, we've got a long way to go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, don't get too emotionally blocked here. We wanna tap into the flow of the universe and, and have those rivers flowing. So allow that to, uh, to keep going and, and don't get too emotionally blocked here. We want, we want the stability, but we wanna also you know, keep, keep it going. Now here is uh, the wands, this is action. Stability, action, two different things. How does this compute, right? It does, because some actions give stability. Some actions are like traditional things, like, like a, a wedding or, or a graduation ceremony, right? This is only the four, we got a long way to go, but, but there's some milestones along the way in life which give stability, some actions that we do which, which give us uh, some kind of, of, of uh, stability along the way. So stability of the action is what's being represented. And it's good to stop and smell the flowers, right? So that's, uh, the, the, this is the, the milestones we should celebrate. Okay, and here's stability of structure. Uh, so stability, structure, that's solid. That sounds great. You've got your health, you've got your wealth. Uh, everything is good. The trouble is that, that this can also uh, you know, lead to isolation, greed. So don't be too stingy. You've got to share uh, and, and open up your, your, uh, you know, your generosity. Otherwise, you become too stagnant, right? Every, every card has its up and down. So don't, uh, so look towards the, the good stability of structure and not be a miser. <laughs> okay, back to the majors. We've got the emperor. Now remember the empress came right before him. She was creative and active. Odd numbers are more active and, and even numbers are more passive. So this is uh, stable um, uh, masculine energy with, with, the, uh, with the stability of the four. Uh, it, a ruler, this ruler doesn't need to get up and wield a sword around. No, he sits down. He's got nothing to prove. He's a good ruler, uh, and that's good masculine energy. He doesn't even have a sword. He's just got a wand there. He doesn't need to, to prove himself because we, we follow his lead because we know he's the best. Uh, he rules over all four corners of his kingdom, and, and, and we're happy to let him do it. Okay, now... Four of the main, uh, the next cycle of four is 14. This is temperance. And 
This is stability through all four elements. So we got the, the fire symbol on her forehead. We got the wings representing air. We've got one foot on the earth, one foot on the water. So all four elements uh, have that uh, stabi stability of all being connected. Uh, but but the, how, is this, how are we finding this stability? It's through the grace of moderation. So she's actually watering down with cold water her hot wine, her hot mold wine. And this creates a moderate drink. Uh, she, you find stability by, by not overdoing it uh, and, and, and getting drunk and, and puking and all that nasty stuff. Is, is we, we get our buzz, you know? It's, we're just watering it down a little bit. We're enjoying life. And, and, and through moderation, through uh, stability, uh, that's the best way to live. So that's uh, the, that, that uh, she's a grace, you know. These are major kind of things, things that we don't really have full control over, but when we have the grace of temperance, it's a good thing. Now, moving on to five, we've got uh, uh, the disruption happening with the fives. And the, the swords are thought. So we're disrupting our thought. Now, how, how is the thought being disrupted? So there's been a battle. These guys are sad. We could disrupt their thoughts by cheering them up, right? But uh, this guy, is he's having a different kind of disruptive thought. He's taking advantage of the situation and stealing swords off the battlefield. So don't, don't be like that guy. He's a jerk. <laughs> you know, have good disruptive thoughts. Do good disruptive things. Don't do bad. Uh, now, this is disruptive emotion, right? And I feel bad for this guy. He spilt his drinks. That sucks, right? But uh, we got to acknowledge that. It's good to, to, to uh, you know, uh, uh, acknowledge emotions. And, and when you're having a, a bad day, I can sympathize with that. But, the, but don't put your emotional blinders on and forget about the good. Emotions go both ways, too. He's got two drinks here that have not been spilt over. If he turns around, maybe he'll see those. Maybe he'll see the bridge over troubled water, which will take him to his friend's house, which will cheer him up. Right, so the, the trick is don't go too much into the depression. It's good to acknowledge that, but but see the good and the bad emotions. It's all about balance. You're, the, the, the equilibrium is the main theme that we'll keep coming back to again and again. Uh, Alephis Levy, one of these great uh, ceremonial uh, esoteric minds, said that, that the, the key to all occult science is, is an equilibrium. So that's the, the main theme that we keep coming back to is, is trying to find that, that that yin yang. Um, okay, so we got the disruption of action. Here is these guys that are all fighting. Uh, they should be collaborating. They should be building something with all this wood. Instead, they're smacking each other around with it. So spite and jealousy among friends instead of cooperative grain uh, for all, that's, that's no good. So we want to uh, have disruption of action again in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, now, disruption of structure. Structures that health and wealth, they've got none. They're out in the cold. They're penniless. They're poor. Uh, this is a dire situation, and that's no good. Uh, but um, but, but you know, i got to always look for the hope, right? In the stained glass window here, we've got an anchor hide, uh, hiding in there, and anchors are a symbol of hope. Uh, the stained glass window, nice and, and, and warm and inviting. If they only look up, right? But, but you have to look up. Now, hope, you know, we've got to always have hope. It's, it's not always going to be there. Sometimes life just sucks and there's nothing we can do about it. But if we keep our chin up, we are at least aware of opportunities if they present themselves. And so we can latch on to that. So it's always best to look for the hope. Uh, and, and that way, when, when it does come, we can, we can take, take it in both hands. Um, now, going on to the, the, uh, the, uh, the higher side, the, the major, back to the major arcana, we got the hierophant. Uh, this is the, the, the teacher card, and he's teaching, uh, in, in, in a, but he's disruption, because it's, it's the disruption of the five. But what is he disrupting? He's disrupting your wisdom. Look, you know about the four, right? That's the elements, uh, but wait, there's more. So he's doing the Pope's blessing, and he's saying, that, you know, there's two fingers down that points to the material, you know that, but there's two fingers up that points to the spiritual or the magical. This is something new that I'm gonna disrupt your, your knowledge with, and I'm gonna give you something, something else. And, and that's very cool indeed. But if we don't learn that lesson, and a lot of people, you know, refuse or accept or refuse to accept that there's something more, well, then the, the 15th card comes along. This is the second cycle of five. And this is the devil. And he says, you know what? If you think that there's only the material, you're right. That's all there is. Uh, and I'm going to lock you up with the, my, my uh, chains of addiction, and I'm going to torture you because that's what you want, right? It's easy to blame the devil. So, uh, so he's going to lock you up. Now, if, if we learn our lesson, and, and sometimes we have to learn it the hard way, 
But, but if we do learn that, that he's just a master of lies and trickery, then we can slip out of these chains because they're really not that tight. And we can, we can uh, and get out and, and, and disrupt his illusion, right? But it's, it's, it's hard. It's easy to, to, to be in that uh, uh, locked chain. This is why it's a major arcana card. It, it's sometimes, it, it's, it's really hard. But if we have the grace, then we can uh, move past the disruption. And boy, am I happy to move past that. Okay, so we're moving to harmony. This is the six, harmony, everything is good. This is the, the golden spot right in the middle of the tree of life. Uh, and, and when we have harmony of thought, then we know exactly what to do. And this is, uh, now they're moving away from, from the rough waters. They're going to the clear waters. This is often called, called the, the immigrant card because they've made up their mind, the, their, the, the, their thoughts are harmonious because they know what to do. Uh, they're, they're leaving all the past behind and they're, they're hopefully a better future is, is awaiting. So they're finding that, that harmony of thought, this, this helps move us forward. Uh, harmony of emotion. This is kind of like a golden year, looking back at the past, nostalgic uh, memories of our youth. And this gives us strength. When we are, are uh, going through rough patches, it's good to remember the, the good stuff. Let the bad stuff go, but, but hold on to the good because that gives us strength. Harmony of emotion. Harmony of action, I love this. This is when everything's going your way. They're throwing you a parade. You've got the laurel wreath there. And, and this is great. Now remember, there's always a reverse side. So if it comes up reversed, maybe the horse is giving him side eye. You know, maybe the, in the back here, somebody's got to be a loser for, the, for somebody to be a winner. So don't get too cocky when this is reversed. But, but generally speaking, when this is upright, uh, a harmony of action, everything's going your way, that's, that's good. Now, in the real world of structure, <laughs> where coins are structure, you know, there's poor people. In a utopian society, we wouldn't have the poor, but, but this is the real world. And so we try to, you know, when we are well off, when we have uh, uh, success, it, we, then we need to have the responsibility, the generosity. And that's why he's got the, the balance beams to say, okay, we're, I'm going to give back a little. I'm going to try and make this a more harmonious and equitable world. So if, if he doesn't, you know, maybe we can help him along with a little Robin Hood action or, or taxing the rich, uh, you know, I, but, but, but this is uh, uh, the, the ideal to strive for is to create harmony in this world, a harmony of structure. Okay, now time out. I'm going to go in back in time here in, uh, because before we go into the, the lover's card, I'm going to see how this card centuries ago, it was called the lover, singular, the lover card. Uh, the lover's the lover's choice actually, and here he's at a crossroads, and he is he's uh, this is this is the number uh, six, right? So it's a harmony. What is the harmony? The harmony between free will and fate. And he's deciding well, which of these two women should I go for? The woman uh, with the flower in the in the hair is represents vice. That's that's what's leading us off the path, right? And, and pulling us towards temptation. And, and you know, she's got flowers in the hair, and that that's kind of <laughs> sexy, right? Uh, but but uh, the woman with the laurel leaf in their hair, that's virtue. That's the path we know we need to go on. So again, major arcana cards. It, it's not really things we can control. We we know deep in our, down in our soul, if we soul search, that there's really no choice. We know that the virtuous path. Uh, is the way, way to go. But because we have free will, sometimes we get off the path, right? We get distracted. Um, and because we have free will, uh, we can sometimes make the wrong choice. But the idea here is, is to make the right choice, even if Cupid gets in the way, and, and go towards, towards uh, uh, align our personal will with the divine or universal will. And when those things are harmonious, in harmony, then we can progress. Now, uh, Arthur Waite, uh, when he had Pamela Smith create his deck, he went with a more Christian symbolism here. So for the sixth card in his deck, we've got a different choice going on. Here is uh, right out of Genesis, uh, Adam and Eve, and they're choosing, should we stay blissfully ignorant in the Garden of Eden, or should we go out there and eat of the fruits of knowledge, eat of the fruit of life, right? And the serpent is actually a symbol of wisdom. He gets a bad rap, and, and you know he's the tempting, but, but actually he's guiding us towards the right choice. The, the divinity, the divine one, it wants to know itself. So it breaks into little tiny pieces, sends itself out to experience life, to experience knowledge, and then come back and reunite with the one, right? So this is the, the choice 
again, is to be harmonious with the universal will and your divine will so that you go out and do just that. Um, and so this is a, a harmony of free will and fate being represented. Now, uh, in the next cycle of six, we've got the 16th card. This is the, the tower. And this doesn't look very harmonious, right? <laughs> but it is. This is when we get off the track, when we, when we, uh, when we you know, go with the flowers in the hair girl and, and, and start you know, going on the wrong thing, then this is a course correct. This is the lightning bolt that smacks us upside the head and says, get on the right uh, path again. So we've built our tower too high with our big ego. We've, we've crowned it with this fake gold uh, crown and, and the divine bolt comes like a bolt of blue and says, uh, nope, that's not the way you do it and, 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 and disrupts everything. But, uh, but it's a, uh, a restoration, a restoration of harmony is what this card is really all about. So I love it when the, har when the, the harmonious uh, thunder struck tower comes because it's, it's just what we need. It might sting a little, yeah, let's be real, but it's just what we need. Okay, moving back to the minors, uh, we've got a disruption, because uh, it's the six, a disruption of thought. And sometimes we've got the devil on our shoulder saying, steal the swords, tiptoe away out of the, out of the camp there, right? Uh, don't, don't disrupt thought for bad. Don't be like this guy. Uh, use your disruption of thought in a good way. Okay, and then we've got the disruption of emotion. So the heart wants what, uh, I'm sorry, uh, are we, we're doing su struggle. I got sidetracked there. Talk about disruption. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is su seven, but so it says, it's, it's not a disruption, it's a struggle. But the struggle is real, even for me. So, <laughs> so, so this, the struggle here is, is a struggle of thought, but it's the same kind of idea. We, we want to struggle to do the right thing, not struggle to do the bad thing. Uh, okay, so sorry about that. Um, so here's the struggle of emotion. Uh, so the heart wants what the heart wants. And, and there's lots of choices here. When we struggle to do, what, what do we lat latch our heart onto? And some of these things look good, some of these things not so good. Some of these things look good with a laurel leaf, but when you look closer, there's a skull on the cup. So it, it takes emotional maturity to uh, be able to uh, discern what is the best course. So when we struggle to find what things to, to latch our emotions onto, uh, you know, we need emotional maturity to do just that. Okay, now, struggle of action. This guy is struggling. He's got a whole bunch of, of opponents here. And you look on the, the water on his hill, it's a slippery slope, but he does have the high ground. He is, uh, you know, fighting with valor, standing his ground. This is all good stuff, but it's a struggle. I mean, he, he's got one boot on and one shoe on. It, the struggle, he, he, they caught him, you know, and it, it, he's, he's struggling. But I, but I have faith in him. He's going to do it. He's, he's going to win. He's going to be victorious. So, uh, so I'm rooting for him. Now, this guy is uh, the struggle of, of structure. So when the crops fail and you see these, these brown withering crops, uh, it, you, what, what do we do to regain that structure? We have to think, think on it. Think slowly because this is slow earth energy happening here with the, with the coins. But uh, we're trying to decide, you know, should I replant late in the season and, and hopefully I'll get my crops to grow or, or should I uh, just buckle down for the winter? These, these are hard decisions, but, but we want to, make, to, to regain structure. Uh, so take the time to figure out uh, the best course forward that will regain that structure. Now, going into the majors, we've got uh, the, the struggle of, of will. So this is the, the charioteer and uh, wait Egyptianified this by putting sphinxes there. But, but back in the old uh, versions of this card, there were horses. And the three uh, parts of the soul that Plato describes as being represented here, uh, the soul has three parts. And the idea is, is that the, we struggle to keep the horses together to, to take us in the right direction. And if we practice a virtuous life, then the horses regrow their wings and take us up to heaven. But it's a struggle. The struggle is real because the horse is pull, pulling apart. Um, and so this is representing, you know, we can get there, we can be victorious, but the struggle is real. Okay, moving on to the second cycle of seven, we've got the star card. And right before this, we think back to the, the 16th and the 15th card, they, they were the dark devil and the dark sky in the, the tower. Those were the darkest cards of the deck. And now the little bit of light returns. So we struggle to see the light in the darkness and follow that star with, with hope. Right? And what's the one thing that say to, that 
to abandon when you enter hell is hope, because hope is the one thing that can, can get us out of hell. So uh, when we, we have hope, this uh, inspires us to struggle forward through the dark and, and get back out. It's a, a very positive card indeed when it comes about. Now, uh, now is big. eight. Eight is balance, right? So we are balancing our thought, and, and, and when we have balanced thoughts, uh, the mental puzzles become clear. So she's in an initiation test of some sort. She's all bound up. Uh, but uh, when she goes into her Zen state and balances her thoughts, she's got the blindfold on so she can do that. And then she can realize that the, the, the solution is right there. Her, her feet are not bound. She can back right up, cut her ties uh, on that sharp, sharp blade behind her, and then go up to the castle, right? So so the, the, the ideas will come, become clear when, when we balance our thoughts. Okay, now, balance of emotion. When we are balancing uh, our emotion uh, with our, our, our responsibilities, the things that we need to do uh, before we go off on our, on our quest, right? So we're going on our quest from the swamps up to the mountain. That's a very good thing. But we don't leave our house in disarray. We stack our, our cups up nice, neat, neat. And, and tidy before we go. We have to, to balance our responsibilities with what we need. We know we need to do. And, and it's, it's a balance of both that, that, uh, that go towards uh, the, the perfect ideal. And we have more themes of balance here with the, with the sun bowing, being balanced by the moon in this eclipse here. But balance is, is the key uh, and balance of emotion. Uh, we'll, we, we, we'll, you know, we, we need to, to do something, but we, we don't leave our people that are counting on us in a lurch. Okay, and here is the balance of action. So the wands are coming in quick, uh, uh, and we need to decide what action to take now. Do we dodge and get out of the way? Do we uh, fire back? We need to decide quickly, because this is fiery uh, wand energy. Um, but, but for every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so we gotta you know, decide quickly, what do we do next? Um, and then we have the, uh, the balance of structure. So here is this artisan, and he's crafting out these, these beautiful pentacles, and he's cracking them out, because you gotta, you gotta make a living, but, uh, but he's balancing the, 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 the mastery of his craft he, with the, the need to just crank them out. So you gotta take pride, even when you're not recognized, He's, he's taking pride in each one of these. And if it's not up to snuff, it doesn't get hung on the wall. He, puts it, he casts it aside behind his bench. So we, we, we need to balance uh, uh, our, our, our drive to, to, to get things, you know, to, to keep production going with, with the, uh, the, the self-satisfaction of mastery of our craft. You balance those two things and, and there's, there's good structure. Okay, going back to the majors. I know, disregard the Roman Romo here, but why isn't this about balance? She's got the balancing uh, scale there and, and she's got the two pillars and, and you're finding the middle way. So of course, this is, this is finding the, the equitable, just, balanced uh, way of, of justice, yeah? Uh, okay, and now going into the, the second cycle of, of eight, this is 18, the moon card. And this looks like a Wes Anderson movie, the way it's so balanced with the two towers. And here we are, we are the little crustacean here crawling up out of the, the lunar sea, the, the lunacy of, of <laughs> the crazy, right? And we're going up the, the middle path right to this divine uh, reflection. The sun is, 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 the, is the beautiful uh, divinity and, and the moon reflects that. Right, so this is so the moon is good too, but the moon gets a little tricksy, right? In the moonlight, our, our eyes are sometimes deceiving. We can't tell is this a is this a dog? Is this a wolf? In the moonlight, the, you know the shadows play tricks. So we have to to find the balance and, and discern the differences. Every truth is but a half truth, and we 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 balance the, these ideas so that we can find that that middle road right up to the the out of the dark sea into the the light. Uh, okay. Now, moving on to the nine. This is the power card, the top of the suite, uh, or the suit, I should say. Um, uh, power of thought. Uh-oh, this is the bad kind of power of thought. This is the kind of power of thought that keeps us up all night with our anxiety. But if we, we want to try and flip it around, because the power of thought can also be very good. Uh, power of thought, we you put your mind to it, you can do anything. You can move mountains, right? So we want to climb up out of the anxiety and, and, and look for the good power of thought. Uh, and, and not so much the, the negative uh, being represented there. Now, the, the positive is being represented with this card. This is 
the, the, the uh, power of emotion. We have emotions and we're powerful emotions. They can, he wishes your command. This, this genie that kind of looks like a little bit like John Travolta is, uh, is saying, hey, you want the cups? I can give you the cups, right? Do anything you want. So when we use our emotions in a good and positive way, uh, anything is possible. You know, the, the, the reverse is that when we let our emotions, uh, you know, drown us into uh, uh, depression, that's not so good. So try and use your emotions uh, in a positive way. Eh, it's hard, but, you know, life is hard. Okay, <laughs> speaking of, this guy's been through a lot. He has uh, been bandaged up. Uh, but he's he's made it to the end, right? We're at the nine. Uh, he's made it through a lot. He's burst through those those wands. He's at the end of the journey. He's ready to take on the final foe, and, and he can do it. Uh, it's like the, the, at a video game. He's ready to take on that last boss, uh, and 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 it's the the power of action. He's gonna get it done. I totally believe it. And here is the uh, the structure, the power of structure. When we have our health, when we have our wealth, life is good. And uh, and we can wear the luxurious clothes. We can have this luxurious falcon. Uh, you know, we've, we've worked hard to get here, so now it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor uh, in this fruitful garden. Uh, so power of structure indeed. Great, great when we can get it. Now, moving back to the majors. This is the power of uh, reflection and, and, uh, and, and looking back at the past, right? He's looking backwards towards the past, this is actually Father Time. We call this the Hermit, but, but in the earlier versions, this is Father Time. So with uh, hindsight is power, the power of, of 2020 vision, right? And, and we are able to learn from our, from our mistakes and from our success, and we are more powerful for it. So the power of, of, of wisdom comes from, from, uh, from looking back towards the past and then guiding other people. Hey, I figured out the right way. Let me show you the way. Okay. And he's up on the, on the mountaintop, you know? <laughs> he's come a long way. Good for him. And now we've got the power of, of the sun. This is as good as it gets, right? Pure energy. So uh, a happy, happy, happy card. Even when this is reversed, this is like a passing cloud. Not so bad. So when the sun comes, uh, good, good, good. Okay, now, uh, 10. 10 is transitions. So with 10, we've got the unity of the, the, of the, of the one, combined with the transition of the cyclical wheel of the, of the zero. So it, we got a transition of thought. Now this is minor arcana, so, so not major stuff. This isn't anything we can, can't handle. So not as bad as it looks. I know it looks pretty bad, but, but it's not. Um, there's a golden dawn that is, is, is rising. So a new thought is being born. And for a new thought to, to you know, uh, rise, we have to kill off the old thought. So that it's, this is a transition from one thought to the other, and he's got a little secret sign there saying, you know, uh, same thing as the, as the Hierophant, you know, as above, so below. So it, nothing ever, you know, truly ends. It's just a transition to the next, the next phase. Uh, all right, now, transition of emotion. This is kind of like called the happy ever after. Everything is rainbows, everything's happy, but what happens after the end, right? There's always something more. So the trick here is to transition uh, your emotion to the next thing, right? We want to transition with our loved ones so that we, our emotions can transition together. If we transition apart, then, then it's not as good, right? So we wanna transition with our loved ones because life is full of change, but we, we uh, keep the emotions uh, you know, together and that way, whether good or bad, uh, we, we're, we're in it together. Okay, transition of action. We've got the guy, he is he's at the end of the day and he's transitioning from work to rest. He wants to put his feet up, take this, this firewood that he's, he's toilessly collected and, and put it on the fire, transform the wood into heat, uh, transform his work into rest, transform uh, you know, uh, to the next day of, of action. So it's all about the transformation of, of action uh, uh, going on here with the 10 transformation and the, and the wands action. Okay, and then we've got the structure of the coins. What transition is happening here? But it's a trans, transfer of legacy, of inheritance. We've got the grandfather. Everybody knows he's in charge. The dogs are giving him, dogs always know, the dogs are giving him the full attention. He's got his hand on one of their heads. But who's got the tail, this little whippersnapper snapper in the back there? Uh, you know, he's coming up in the ranks. So the transition is, is happening. But, but who is transitioning? Thing first to is this guy in the background literally 
the torch is being passed to him. He's picking up a torch off the wall. So this is a transition of legacy, of structure, the family name, uh, of, of, and, and, and uh, the grandfather must, must pass on the legacy to the next generation. Okay, transition of the wheel. This is the wheel of life. Sometimes we're up, you know, on the top. Sometimes we're down, you know, the wheel spins. But this is an opportunity to, to step back it's an otherworldly card and, and see the big picture, right? So this is the, the wheel of life and we can step back and, and find that Zen and, and, and take it all in. So that it's, we see the transitions happening and, and it's, this, it's a nice, uh, a powerful, uh, higher kind of kind of wisdom coming to us with that card. Now, transition of, of uh, the next transition <laughs> in uh, this, the 20th card, so the second cycle of 10, we got judgment. And this is a, uh, a rather Christianized version of it with the last judgment, but it's a transition from one life to the other. Uh, you can also see this as a, as a transition of, of within this life, right? The, the trumpeter is calling us to transition in this life. Uh, sometimes this card uh, has been called fame. So how do you want to be remembered for the good or the bad? And it's never too late to turn over a new leaf to be that, that phoenix rising again. So transition, now is the time hear the call of the trumpet and and transition uh now so that's that's happening now and then now we have the fool so the fool sits outside the minor arcana and the minor arcana he is a maverick and it's that zero that that big transition so he's he is the transitioning spirit uh from one incarnation to the next the unformed form so he is this this pure essence of ourselves before we take that step into the real world and watch that step it's a doozy but we we, we want uh to when the fool comes up it's a reminder to see the world as the fool sees it pure and maybe a little naive but 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 we see everybody in in the bo most positive and good way um life is fresh and and happy go lucky and it's it's good to to see the world that way so the fool reminds us to to take it all in and and and, and have that that light heart uh, and, and you'll get lots of wisdom. Um, okay, now, that is the deck. So, you, it's, so as you see, all it really takes is the, 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 the key words uh, of the 1 through 10 mixed with the, uh, the, the elemental energies. And when you mix those two, and you just think about it, what, what is uh, uh, this and this combined? What does that mean to you? And then you'll start reading the tarot easy. You know, right? and, and then the more you do it, the, the easier it becomes. And, and you can, uh, and I, I really recommend, you know, just, just giving all the wisdom away. But I forgot about a couple cards here. So I'm going to go through these real quick. These are the core cards. Now, the, these don't have the elemental energies. These have just pure elemental uh, energies. So we've got four ranks, right? We've got uh, the, the, the page. That's the lowest rank. So that's earth, right? We've got the wand, uh, sweet, or the fire energy. This is the knight, and he's riding into action, full of fire, right? Uh, we've got the, the empathetic queen, and she, she, she's uh, emotional and, and, and loving. And, and so this, the, the water, right, is, is tied to the queens. And we all hope that our rulers, the king on top, are, are, are smart people, we hope. So this is the, the swords, the, uh, the thoughts, right? Now, in addition to those four ranks, which rank into uh which correlate to the four elements we also have the suit so we've got the the swords uh suit which is thoughts and then we've got the the, the water suit which is the the cups so now we get start getting creative because we're, we're going to combine the two suits together so this is a knight which so that's fire and combined with cups that's water so we think well do who do i know that has uh a fiery uh drive uh but also is emotional you know, maybe, maybe a temperamental artist, perhaps. Uh, I kind of identify with this Knight of Cups. Uh, it, you know, you, it, so you, you look at these like uh, emotional uh, uh, with the cups or, 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 or spirited with the wands or, or nice and stable with the, cu uh, with the, with the coins or the, or the pentacles or, or the uh, thinkers with the, with the swords. And then the combinations of, of, the, of the two combinations together, we get 14 personality types. Those are the the court cards. These are the actors that, that show up 
sometimes in your readings and you say, oh, I know that guy. Is, is the reading telling me that, that I should be more like that guy? Or, oh, or the, I see these two cards and they're, they're, they're interacting with each other. They're looking at each other or they're not looking at each other. Well, what does this mean? Because I know the, the personality types. There's 14 Myers-Briggs personality types too, and there just so happens to be 14 court cards. So you can find out which your personality type is and, and link it to one of these. And then you start seeing these people and you're like, oh, I know that person, or I know that energy. And, and then they become like old friends. And so then these guys are easy to read with as well. So that's it. That's the entire deck. And, and now you can read tarot. <laughs> I think I got five more minutes. All right, so, so in the bonus five minutes, let me just tell you a little bit. Uh, I've got my own deck called the Al Cento Tarot coming out soon, so look for that. It's being published by U.S. Games. I call it the Al Cento because there's all 100 cards, not just the 78 cards that we went through today, but there's 100 cards in my deck because... You know how the, the, the world card was the, the 21st card that was the third cycle of, of, of one? Well, I've got the rest of the cycle. And it all corresponds with those, those keywords, these lost cards that I'm putting back into the deck to complete the deck for my vision of a, of a complete 100 card deck that, that has these extra bonus cards. And you don't have to read with them, but, but why wouldn't you? So I've got a deck coming out. It includes the Zodiac to fully round it out. Uh, so those cards are in there too. Uh, but but it's a complete 100 card deck called the Al Cento. Look for that out there. And and now, um, oh, when when is it's coming out? Sometime this year. I don't even know. Uh, I've been working on it for years. They they promised that it will be published uh, sometime soon. So uh, if you want, go to my website offbeatartwork.com. That's offbeatartwork.com, and you can sign up for my mailing list. And I'll be uh, sure to let you know when that when that deck comes out. And you can also see my offbeat artwork. And also at Artomatic, uh, one floor up uh, at the marketplace today, I will be selling my offbeat artwork. And if you like, I can also give a tarot reading uh, to you. So uh, uh, feel free to join me upstairs. And once again, thank you so much for everybody for coming. I hope you got something out of it. And I encourage you all to become tarot readers and, and, and brightest blessings on your spiritual journeys. <laughs>